firstly wanted to welcome everybody um, to our webinar, um, which we've titled Sparking Value from a Purposeful Website. Um, and uh, the reasons that we chose that theme will become clear as we go through the uh, presentation. Um, but as I say, thanks for spending the time joining us. I'm looking forward to really sharing some of the latest trends and insights and examples of what good looks like um, across the corporate websites um, for this year. Um, what I'll do is I'll literally just do a couple of minutes intro to Black Sun. Some of you may not be um, as familiar with us as others. Um, then I thought it'd be just good to give a bit of a backdrop on the Web 100, why we do it, what it contains, kind of things we look for, um, and what we're seeing as um, you know, some of the key findings, and also share some best practice examples uh, over the last year or so that we've seen um, in our latest results. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop them into the chat um, and we'll pick them up either at the end um, or if I see them as we go through, I will uh, pick them up as we go through a suitable point. Um, we will also share the slides um, with attendees. Um, so no need to take furious notes. I'm happy to share those and you'll have some of the images in there that link to various pages on the web as well for the um, best practice examples and so on. So that's all taken care of for you. Um, and uh, if there are any questions after the event that you think of, then feel free to reach out to myself or to Naomi, and we'll give you contact details um, at the end uh, when we follow up the results for you. Okay. Um, but first of all, just a little bit of an intro into um, Black Sun. Um, as many of you know, we're an international stakeholder communications company. Um, so what we really focus on is helping organizations you know, basically make more value uh, relationships with their stakeholders. And so what that really involves is helping organizations better communicate how they create long-term value for their different stakeholders. And if you like, the three areas or key areas or silos of our activities are around stakeholder reporting, sustainability and ESG communications, and clearly digital transformation of which this webinar is a core part. And from a digital perspective, our real expertise is about sparking kind of greater stakeholder engagement through digital experiences. We offer a full suite of digital services. Um, so we call these the four C's, um, just because it's easy for me to remember apart from anything. So firstly, a coherent strategy working with clients to make sure they have a really good digital strategy. Everything joins up, the corporate website in particular fits within their broader ecosystem. Creating that compelling experience through design and creative identity, helping them create and um, generate uh, relevant content for each of the audience groups. And of course, providing a technology platform to which managing their uh, digital ecosystem is uh, really easy. So we um, design, develop, produce, and manage corporate websites, as you'll see here. There's one for Coca Cola, Hellenic, um, and the uh, various country sites that they run, about 26 or so of those. We also do online reports um, and uh, corporate reporting for our clients. We help uh, organizations improve and enhance their uh, B2B website. So this is an example with Inmarsat, um, who do a great job on uh, driving new business opportunities through their website. We also um, develop career sections or career websites for our clients. Many of our clients um, obviously have that as a focal point within their sites. And for many clients, that's actually the highest traffic area of their corporate site. And of course, we deliver internal communications. Um, so whether that be kind of newsletters, intranets, and so on for our clients, and um, which help obviously deepen engagement with internal stakeholders. Anyhow, enough about us, um, but just gives you a bit of a picture about who we are and kind of the scope of our digital work. Um, what I wanted to do now is to really um, just share some of the uh, insights around what we call the Web 100, which is really understanding what, uh, what the trends and changes are for corporate websites. So this um, is the eighth year of analysis, um, and uh, we're seeing I guess a continued trend around the drive of purpose. Um, and I'll explain more or a little bit uh, on that when we talk about some of the trends and year on year differentials. Um, firstly, why do we do it? And I, I mean, I suppose this is um, almost speaking uh, you know, to an, an audience that knows this already, but we know some of the challenges that companies face. You know, we know that trust overall and um, for all the barometers, um, you know, is overall continues to fall. We know obviously the severe economic and COVID challenges impact on that increasingly active stakeholders. You know, we know sustainability is increasingly top in the corporate agenda, incredible battle for talent, um, and of course, sizing shift to digital accelerated through the pandemic um, and shows no sign of abating. 
And uh, you know, from a digital perspective, clearly digital communication is therefore a massive opportunity. You know, we've got um, you know, a new unique ability to reach and engage new audiences. Um, and uh, you know, own channels enable businesses to engage their stakeholders, of which clearly the corporate website is an absolutely fundamental part. Um, and uh, you know, on the right there, you can see through the Edelman Trust, you know, how actually business is more trusted than many of the other institutions. So there's a real opportunity there to uh, effectively communicate the messages with different stakeholder groups. Now, and we know, and I'll show you some stats in a, in a while, you know, how digital communications and corporate website in particular do affect investment decisions, talent decisions, it's a top source to attract talent. You know, all the uh, trends are that even B2B transactions, you know, which traditionally have been perhaps a little bit less online, you know, 75% of those are now forecast to be uh, online within five years. So, you know, a website can directly affect shareholder and analysis investment decisions. So just a couple of uh, little stats there on the right hand side from Revell Research just shows how uh, important the corporate website is for different audience groups. Um, we're also seeing that you know, clearly sustainability and ESG are crucial for investment decisions. You know, so for example, um, you know, two trends here from PwC show how important it is for ESG um, uh, and sustainability, obviously in making investment decisions for uh, you know, longer term investors, raters, rankers, and so on and so forth. And so a critical part of the mix within a corporate website. Now I'll show you some trends that we're seeing within ESG um, in a few slides time. And we know that the website is crucial in the search for talent. You know, the CPD and all other research says it's a top destination for prospective employees. And also, you know, as we'll see from some of the trends, actually uh, many of the corporates are addressing these next couple of uh, key battleground areas. You know, eight out of 10 prospective employees look for values aligned to their own and their prospective employer. 75% of workforce um, you know, expect their employers to be a force for good. And that's also something that rippled through on the uh, Edelman Trust parameters. And the corporate website gives, is just one channel, but it's clearly an opportunity to engage prospective employees and indeed current employees with some of those uh, values and uh, communications. And as we know, engaging stakeholders improves your stockholder and stock market performance. And so again, just some stats here from McKinsey about how much value growth that can drive. So, I mean, that's a broad backdrop as to um, obviously what we're seeing in terms of the world of communications, how we need to drive engagement with stakeholders. And obviously with the corporate website being a pivotal owned channel for want of a better term, you know, as one of the key destinations for your stakeholders and therefore a pivotal uh, channel to market for your wider communications. In terms of who we uh, look at, we look at both the FTSE 100 um, we do do a sample based of the 250 as well, um, just to see if there's any contrast between the FTSE 100 and 250. Um, and we also do the top 30 listed companies in the Singapore Exchange. Um, we'll do a separate session on, on the results for that um, over the next kind of couple of months or so. And it gives us real insight across all of the um, FTSE organisations. And in terms of what we look at, um, there are two things that we factor into the uh, analysis. The first is what we call the Web 100 metrics itself. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but we also factor in the analytics that we see in the deep dive um, analysis that we can do across corporate websites that we host and look after or have access to on behalf of our clients. And because what that gives us a real insight into the um, priority content for different audience groups. So for the content, we have about 150 metrics or so. Um, and we draw these metrics, not only from our own best practice experience and knowledge, we also look at what other organizations think are material, um, such as the IR Society or CBT, um, FRC and so on. Um, so we really get a broad perspective of what different stakeholder groups need and require from their corporate website. And to share with you how it is structured, um, we look at content, and experience. So these five areas are the narrative and uh, experiential content areas that we look at. So what overall is the corporate narrative um, and how does that flow? How does it go across the different uh, areas of the site? How do we address investor or sustainability, the media and journalist needs, and also careers, prospective employees? So um, you know, clearly that is aligned to the key areas of the website, but also the different audience groups. And we're able to then assess across these different metrics how well an organization is delivering its uh, content, meeting the content needs of those audiences. But that's just half the mix. The other half is around the experience that's delivered. 
So we assess um, as best we can, you know, if you like the desirability of the site, so how good it is to engage with, how interactive, how distinctive the creative design is and look at the feel, how easy is it to find content, to get to the content you need to, and to read the content on the page or view it through videos or whatever the different uh, medium are within the website. And um, so really just assessing the overall user experience uh, that the website provides, because that's obviously a critical part of how much the content is absorbed and read to work hand in hand, as we know. And then when we look at the analytics, well, what does the analytics tell us? And the reason we factor this in is it's just not an academic exercise of, you know, what we think might be uh, good content and good experience. You know, what we find is that content, broadly speaking, divides into these three areas. So you've got, if you like, the live content, which is more kind of time sensitive information like news or RNS alerts, share price information and so on, that keeps you connected with your shareholders or stakeholders day by day. That tends to drive recency and frequency of visit, clearly. There is then the narrative content, which is how you tell your corporate story. So that might be things like, you know, the videos or the interactive features, communicating your key points of difference. It might be your people stories and so on. And that tends to drive much more around dwell time and uh, you know, in-depth page views. And then you've got the evergreen content, which might be, you know, the resources for particular experts, such as um, you know, ESG reports, annual reports, uh, sustainability policies and so on and so forth, um, which obviously drives a lot of utility of what these uh, different audience groups need. And what analytics allows us to do is obviously assess the content across each of these. And we look across all of the sites to see what's driving uh, user behavior and what they're uh, looking at. So just to kind of try and illustrate that a little bit as to how we factor into the prioritization of content. This shows an illustrative point around the um, investor and priorities and content. So our analysis looks at and those um, seven main areas. How good is the investor narrative that a company provides through the corporate website? Do they communicate investment proposition and how well that's joined up? ESG clearly high up the agenda. And then there's the more kind of, if you like, factual information around results and reports, financial information, news and events or shareholder information. So those are all content things that we can analyze and assess whether the content is provided. What the analytics tells us across all of the sites is, well, actually, what do they go for? So if you like, this focus on area is obviously what drives frequency of visit, get the latest RNS results go into the site. We also know from the analytics what they dwell on, so what they read in a bit more in depth, scroll down the page, spend time on the site for, you know, that's around the annual report, if there's one online, results presentations and being able to read that and digest that information, perhaps some of them longer financials and key performance indicators. So that drives dwell time. But there are other areas clearly that they browse or look at, perhaps not quite so much as the, you know, the other areas, but they are clearly important areas for those audiences to access. You know, it might be information at a glance, it might be the board and the board profiles, increasingly looking around the company purpose, company strategy and how that locks up the business model, and of course, the overall sustainability overview. And what this allows us to do is to then factor in different elements of the questionnaires, how much we weight them and so on to get an overall performance score. And, but I thought it was in, important to just assess and give you an example through the investor lens as to what we look at within the corporate site. And obviously this ripples through also the sustainability area, careers, media, and so on and so forth, because we have the analytics across all of those pieces. If there are any questions on that, please do uh, let us know. Um, and I suppose the... Um, the reason we came up with the trend this year of Purposeful is over the last couple of years, we've really seen, no surprise, I'm sure, to anyone on the phone and on the call, um, that um, you know, purpose is right up there at the top of the agenda and is framing and informing a lot of the communications delivered through corporates and in particular through the corporate website. Um, but what do we mean by purposeful? Well, I think the first thing is that we're seeing a lot of the content is purpose-driven. I'll explain that on the next slide. Secondly, we're seeing a much greater focus on being what I call audience-centered. So there's been a real step change in delivering and marshalling content and the narrative that suits the different audience groups. Um, so perhaps a little bit less siloed, a little bit more narrative-centered um, and more contained, you know, so people don't have to hop off to different sections and areas of sites. 
And the third is I think corporate sites continue the trend of the last couple of years of really trying to deliver a much more enriched experience, greater use of video, greater use of um, you know, animated GIFs and so on. And again, I'll just share some of these trends with you later on in the presentation. Um, so given I can only remember three things, um, these are the three trends, if you like, that, that we pulled out from, this, from the research this year. So what do we mean by purpose-driven? Well, I guess we're seeing sites that are purpose-led, i.e. what I mean by that is purpose is becoming the linchpin of the communications, and I will show that in a kind of hierarchy diagram on the next slide. Um, but really making sure that each of the stakeholders has purpose clearly, clearly communicated and articulated for their individual needs. Secondly, purposefully different. So what we mean by that is companies are increasingly investing in ways to communicate their points of difference. What differentiates them in the competition? What differentiates them in the marketplace? What differentiates them from an investment proposition perspective? And to really kind of stand out from the peer group, if you like. And the third is purpose with outcomes. So again, we're seeing increased trends, not just in marshalling, here's our purpose and our strategy, but actually what does this mean in terms of outcomes? So we're seeing more in the way of kind of people profiles of their employees. We're seeing more of sustainability, case studies and outcomes and uh, proven proof points there. We're seeing more in terms of bringing the strategy to life, strategy in action, strategic case studies or company profiles within the group. And so really just trying to make sure that the purpose is brought to life. Um, not just a strap line that uh, introduces the organization. And so we see that a little bit on the next slide um, when we look at, um, for example, the um, stats and how they flow through the site. So, I mean, this has grown tremendously over the last couple of years. You know, if I was to look back a couple of years, it's probably only about you know, 10 or 20% of the um, FTSE that actually had a purpose statement at all. Whereas now we're sitting at 84% of them have a clear purpose statement and 43% of them actually dedicate a page to describing their purpose, sometimes associated with values, and but clearly articulating that purpose. But what's increasingly interesting is how it is then connecting through the rest of the areas of the site. You know, so firstly, over half of the organizations have content that reinforce their purpose. So that might be positioning around blogs or insights or news articles that, that reinforce that purpose. They're much better at connecting purpose to the corporate strategy and showing how that drives their corporate strategy. Introducing the purpose on the investor section so that it's really clear from an investor perspective how the investment case stacks up under their purpose. And obviously, um, you know, purpose is one of the critical things for career sections. So prospective employees are looking at that. And again, over half of the organizations are now signposting purpose, top and center stage, whereas perhaps they wouldn't have done, you know, two or three years ago. They've just been passing on the homepage but now it's absolutely uh, center to the career experience. Um, and I think this is a real shift in the narrative of corporate websites and how they're addressing uh, the long-term kind of sustainability and prosperity of the organization. And what we mean by purposefully different is, um, hopefully these stats will come through okay for you. Um, you know, as you'd expect, you know, 90% or so of organizations include their strategy within the corporate website. I slightly wonder what's happened with the other 10, but probably more focused on, I guess, more business model outcomes on it. Um, but also there's, a, there's been a real increase in around looking to explain what makes them different. So it's perhaps harder for us to assess that, but it has been different, definite step change, you know, around, um, you know, that kind of differentiation viewpoint. And sites are therefore also highlighting more their strategic priorities. So taking their strategy and articulating more, actually, what does that mean from a priority perspective? And then a growing number are showing strategy in action. So that's actual case studies or narrative that shows actually how that strategy is being lived throughout the organization. As you'd expect, many then evolve the strategic priorities and strategy to show how they create value through the business model. Um, and increasing number of those then explain how that business model is delivering value for all of their stakeholders. And then the linkages, so linkaging the strategy to the investment case, linking the strategy to include their KPIs and natural performance measures of what they measure as the outcome of the strategy, and then linking obviously the strategy directly to KPIs. So again, what we're seeing, I guess, is purpose driving strategy, strategy being fleshed out in much more detail in terms of the actual priorities and objectives, 
how that creates value through the business model, linking that across the KPIs and financial performance numbers, and then bringing it to life through a, a strategy and action area of the website. So a much more locked up strategic narrative that tries to differentiate that organization from the rest of the um, peer group. And I, I won't go into all of the web pages for each of these, but I just thought I'd show a couple of examples um, that um, really illustrate the point about purpose driving through the um, organization. So this is an example of Vodafone. Um, and I'm going to show you examples, some of these that we do and some of them we don't, because um, I always believe that best practice you know, can stand anywhere. Um, so this isn't just a showcase of all of our work, but um, I mean, obviously many of the sites are, um, but Vodafone isn't one of those. Um, but this is a really interesting uh, organization about how they drive purpose. So, you know, clearly in the About Us section, you can see here on the left-hand side, they talk about being a purpose-led company, introduce their purpose. Um, you can see it here in terms of the um, area here around the investor section. So this is the homepage of the investor section. After introducing the organization, again, there's a purpose video, purpose in action, and they bring to life through the investor site. Um, sustainable business, again, just introduces sustainability in the context of their purpose. Um, and finally, you know, the careers area and uh, the fact, again, that, um, you know, that is articulated slightly different spin on it, as you perhaps expect for a prospective uh, employee audience, um, you know, again, reinforcing that purpose. Uh, a couple of these are different microsites and so on, um, but it does just show how locked up that term purpose narrative is through their real estate. So a good example of, of that. Another example is Anglo-American. I think they do a really good job. And the reason I picked this was, um, firstly, they're very good at articulating their purpose. And you can see this on the left, they have a purpose and values page with a great uh, video. Um, but they also um, interlink an area of their site called Future Smart Mining, which anchors directly onto their purpose. And what that does is through videos and articles and so on, is just bring to life what they mean by their purpose and what that actually means in practice. So it's quite, Good example of bringing that content higher up the uh, website agenda and just reinforcing that overall purpose. And again, in the um, career site, which I think, uh, is slightly separate in terms of its kind of creative look and feel, um, but again, it just talk about you know the future of smart mining and what they mean and you know what the career means in terms of getting ready for the future. So again, phraseology and articulation is aligned with their purpose. And the third example in this section um, is much more around um, a Burberry. And the reason I shared this one was um, just to really take the point around differentiation and communicating that. So clearly Burberry, again, as I've just seen on the previous examples, has a very powerful communication of its purpose um, and takes you through the rest of the page on you know, the values and you know, what that means to the organization. So a great example there. Um, they also have very good connections from that through to the strategy, the business model in the investment case, just showing some screen grabs on the right hand side there. Um, so really just uh, making sure that's understood and cross-linked and the narrative uh, execution is joined up. But they've also created this area, which is unmistakably Burberry, which talks about their history and heritage of um, not only them as an organization, but some of their iconic items. Um, so you can see that within this area of the site. Um, and then obviously this is the trench coat, which just brings to life that kind of iconic uh, piece of clothing where um, an extraordinary heritage that it has. Um, but all that serves to just really reinforce how different Burberry is in its standalone position within the marketplace under that unmistakably Burberry area of the site. So a really great example of purpose linked to strategy, business model, investment case, and that point of differentiation I talked about earlier on in the presentation. Let's then turn to perhaps some of the more um, other areas of the site and what we mean by audience driven. So if the audience driven, I think um, the first thing that we want to talk about would be kind of investment, uh, I guess the investor section, for example. And what I've done here is rather than give a, a load of different stats and so on, I, I wanted to pull out something in terms of ESG. Um, and there are a few examples towards the end of the press that I'll cover off on um, all of these um, different areas that I talk about. We're seeing continued growth in communicating the investment proposition, probably no surprise there to anybody. Um, and again, as I said before, that linkage of narrative to, from the investment proposition from purpose to that onwards to KPIs and performance has, has improved significantly. I thought people would be interested in now that ESET has rolled out across sites, um, there's a small stat there, but 50% of organizations are also providing a viewer, not just the download. I thought people might find that as a useful takeaway. 
Um, but the biggest growth trend year on year is ESG, which perhaps is no surprise. And I just thought it'd be interesting to share with you that um, you know, over half of the uh, websites now have an ESG section, typically within the investor section, as you would expect, as clearly it's not the same as sustainability. Um, third, share their ESG focus areas and priorities. Um, and then you can see that some of the other stats around, um, actually we're seeing a growth in ESG splitting presentations to investor audiences, sustainability audiences. We're seeing better linkages through to um, news stories or case studies that relate to ESG and perhaps broader sustainability narrative. Um, and uh, you know, about a third of the organizations are sharing specific ESG data and reports. And that was only a set to rise, I'm sure. Um, and about 20 odd percent or so show the rating agencies they used and have linkages to those sites to show what the scoring mechanism is and so on. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting for you to see the, um, the growth and the trend in those um, ESG areas within the uh, investor area of the site. In terms of the sustainability section of the site itself, um, we've captioned this as sustainability gets real, which may be a bit of an interesting uh, title for people. Um, but what we mean by that is, you know, three or four years ago, you know, the sites were really just addressing the overall approach to sustainability um, and not much detail. And what we're seeing year on year is firstly, a tangible increase in communicating specific objectives and targets. Um, so now 80% of sites are actually articulating, here is my sustainability objective, that's up 11%, one of the biggest um, rises year on year. Um, and 75% then give very specific targets against that. Um, with another 70 odd percent showing what the performance data is. And again, that's another growth area year on year. And so much more tangibility in terms of objectives and targets. And a greater prominence of governance in relationship to sustainability. So explaining how the board has oversight of sustainability, i.e. bringing it to the core and the top of the agenda. Again, a little bit huge increase there, 40 percent year on year. Um, and, uh, you know, 52% now have a sustainability committee um, that oversees, obviously, their sustainability activity. And finally, um, as part of that, um, if you like, uh, outcome-driven area that we talked about earlier, you know, there's a much greater emphasis on showcasing outcomes. So sharing case studies or news that promotes actually the outcome and results of their work. So not just we're achieving the target, but here's an illustration of how we've done that and bring it to life um, for the different audiences. And it's those areas as well that tend to drive greater dwell time within the sustainability area of the section, clearly looking at the objectives and so on the lap drives frequency and traffic. Um, but the case studies and stories and narrative and videos are things that drive the dwell time and engagement for all stakeholders from what we see in the analytics. The next area is talent. So clearly the battle for talent continues. Um, anything you're probably holding up, to be quite honest. Um, and as you'd expect, perhaps within the um, careers area of the site, whether it's a standalone site or incorporated within the um, overall corporate site, we're seeing similar trends here. You know, 56% are now introducing their purpose front, front and centre stage. Um, and that's up 12% year on year. So you can see again um, how much that's grown. And uh, almost half of them are also signposting and introducing sustainability. And again, we see a lot of traffic from careers areas across the sustainability content in the corporate site. So that's clearly a hot topic for prospective employees. There's also a growth in what we call addressing very specific audience needs. So addressing whether it's um, you know, new starters, you know, early careers, you know, graduates or um, interns or um, you know, school leaders and so on. It might be um, you know, experienced hires or you know, particular segments of the market that uh, are gone for. But um, again, we're seeing that growth in targeting content that relates to each of those different groups. Um, and also another high priority area is showing how talent is um, grown, trained and developed um, as they uh, stay with the organisation. It's a clear part of the um, value proposition, play value proposition. And then finally, you know, seeing a greater growth in connecting with new talent. Um, so um, again, probably two or three years ago, there wasn't as much work in terms of promoting vacancies and offering opportunities. Now that's at over 80% of the corporate sites. Those that don't are probably more the group uh, holding companies that uh, operate. And 43% now allow people to submit a, talent, a CV or um, you know, submit informational contact details in the event of an opportunity coming up. 
Um, and again, you can see the growth path on that, you know, 16% year on year. So that's a big, uh, big change year on year. Um, and that all just illustrates how important battle of talent is for every organization. And then finally, um, media, not a huge amount to say, so it gets slightly more interesting. Um, but I thought a couple of things are quite interesting to share with you. And clearly, we know obviously news articles and media and so on are, are an important part of the corporate site. Um, seeing an interesting growth in podcasts being used in the site. Um, so that's up 8% year on year and now it's sitting at 27%. Um, social walls, social media walls feeding into the site to make the site feel a bit more current active. Not a huge shift on that, but still at 26%. Um, but we are seeing a continued evolution and growth around insights and blogs and articles, um, you know, whether that be CEO blogs, organizations or corporate insights, as I showed you earlier. Um, that is obviously a stable um, way within the media section. So again, often to reinforce the kind of purpose or the central differentiation of the organization. So I hope that gives some uh, kind of information on what we're seeing in terms of, you know, the trends around content from different audiences. And so if there are any questions, do pop them in the chat. I'll try and get to them at the end. So the second half of what we look at is then talking around the experience and what we mean by an enriched experience. And, you know, I guess for many years, you know, look back five, six years, you know, I guess the corporate side played second fiddle to many of the B2B and consumer sites that organizations ran. And I think definitely we've seen that gap closing over the years. And I think when we look at the particularly year on year activities, you know, what we're seeing is, you know, more engaging content and delivery. Um, we'll get back a bit. Um, and on my screen, this is actually Egg is an animated GIF opening out and showing something within it, but I suspect it's not showing on your screen because it's showing through Zoom. So apologies for that. Um, but, um, you know, just allowing that kind of more use of video, greater ambient videos and GIFs more interesting way the content loads in. You know, those are simple ways that we can make the site more engaging and uh, increase dwell times. There are some continued kind of navigation aids, if you like, as to take people through the site and get quickly to the content. And I'll show you a couple of examples of those in a wee while. Um, and then uh, interactive features for key content. So we're seeing an increased growth, you know, as I showed you a little bit, perhaps within the Burberry um, example about how organizations are promoting their key points of differentiation. And there are a couple of examples I'll show you around gamification. There's a couple of organizations that have started to introduce games, particularly around careers or sustainability, to try and bring that content a bit more uh, to the fore and engage their audiences. So a couple of examples to share with you in a, in a little while. So um, this is a site that's um, gone live fairly recently, um, which is Imperial Brands. And the reason I share this is because it's quite a, a good example, I think, of a real narrative shift in, uh, in corporate sites. So you can see the traditional navigation has shifted. Um, let me just bring this across in the browser if that works. So you can see here, you know, you've basically got a different narrative and um, moving away slightly from the traditional kind of investor careers and so on, and to be a bit more narrative, you know, incredibly uh, rich visuals and imagery, um, strong call to actions and so on. Um, you know, just talking a little bit more around some of the narrative and products on the page. So. Um, you know, quite a shift in terms of, um, you know, what corporate sites are doing. And we're probably seeing this a lot as a start embryonic shift. Um, it's probably one of the leaders in the pack for that regard. And we're increasingly seeing this shift for a more narrative style of content, more visual delivery, more people introductions and leadership um, that Imperial set out. So a good, good shift across from the market there. Another example I did want to show you was um, something for um, Temasek. Um, and this just plays to the fact around the navigational aids. So this is actually their online report, online review for the year, it's slightly separate to their corporate site, but it uh, showed a couple of interesting navigational elements I wanted to share with you. So not only is it animating nicely onto the page, I hope it shows through Zoom okay, and might be a bit jerky, but um, you know, real rich imagery, little narrative content and so on. But it's a very big site, as you'll see from the navigational panels here. Um, so one of the things that um, was worked on for that was to create this little navigational device, which basically allows you to shortcut and take a diagonal lens through the site. So for example, if I go towards a net zero world, what this does is take a slice of content across the site that meets that particular topic and audience need. 
um, which they knew as a priority through their audience analysis, and just draws in some of the priority content. So if that's what you're interested in, it's basically surface that key content for you. If you were to look at perhaps um, you know, how they're uplifting lives and communities, again, you can start to see very different but related content that goes across that. Or of course, you've got the pure financials and portfolio. So again, a nice example of actually, I can choose content that I want to be able to see and it's curated for me within that page. And it's a fairly simple device, but what we found interestingly was that this device actually attracted a significant number of high value audiences, 12 times was substantially increased because it, it appealed to that type of audience that part knew the content in the organization and knew what they wanted to access from it. And so a very powerful device for them. You can see a couple of questions, so I will make sure I do pick those up and then I've only forgotten them, just in case you're wondering. Thank you for asking. And um, this site I also wanted to share with you as an example of um, you know, a new site that has a very good um, delivery of content. So you can see as you go to the home page, you know, immediately you're drawn in by the um, ambient video they're playing, it introduces the group, reinforces their overall proposition around you know, being a diversified international food and ingredients retail group. Um, and you know, to show the power of video, this is the introduced page introducing their purpose and link to, and a video that you know explains a little bit more about um, ABF. And uh, you know, they basically had thousands of views when the site went live on that um, new video, which shows the power of video in attracting uh, dwell time and engaging audiences. But ABF have also taken a really good approach around you know promoting you know their different areas of the business. So, for example, if I was to go to the grocery page. There's a really nice use of ambient video at the top. It just tells that narrative story around the grocery division. And there's one of those each, uh, each of the top areas of the site. Um, and again, you can see their, you know, their business as an action, which is the point I was making earlier about just bringing to life what their businesses do. And um, maybe I do that well within the site. Um, and because one of their key points of difference, obviously, is the breadth of brands and so on. You know, they've got a little A to Z finder. They've got a um, where we operate. A map which shows you know how they where which brands operate across the globe. So again, this is a really good example of a site that's locked up from a kind of communications and experiential viewpoint. I wanted to share with you. And then another example, um, this is Nestle. Um, you don't look up to the site, but it's a really interesting example, I think, where um, and I'll just click through and see if this works. Um, I'll, hopefully it won't be too much noise while uh, let it run and see what it's like. Um, but this is one of their challenges that they highlight um, that we thought was a pretty good example. Um, so what they're doing is addressing front and centre, you know, the challenge around palm oil um, and, uh, you know, its use and obviously the impact it can have on the environment. Um, and in the background, which you won't be able to hear, is basically, you know, a summary video of what the challenge might be. And then the user can engage with that and decide now. Deforestation. Um, I'll go back because otherwise the noise, but it explains what it is that, um, you know, the challenges that can be faced. Um, and the reason that's interesting is then when you get to the next stage, you can actually decide what they should do. Should they engage local farmers or not, or should they cut them out of the supply chain because they're not as um, responsible? Um, and then depending on what you select, it then gives a narrative after that as to what um, Nestle thinks of that choice or you know, sets the challenge back. So it's a really nice way of getting the user engaged in the, in the content and being actively deciding what, what they should do. Um, another example, I won't click into this, um, but another example is KLM. Um, and um, you know, basically, you know, what they've done is basically uh, got a little intro video around flying responsibly, and then introduces the three different areas of what we do, what can you do, and uh, what the industry can do. Um, so it's quite a nice way of executing that. And then careers at um, Lloyd's. Um, the reason I wanted to share this, you know, there's quite a few really good career sites. Um, and, uh, you know, the career site for Lloyd's Banking Group is got very good content if you want to browse through it. And um, it's got a good structure and a good hierarchy of content addresses the different segments of joiners. Um, but actually, I just wanted to share with you these couple of areas. I won't click into the site because it also takes a little time through that for you. Um, but, um, you know, it talks about a little virtual HQ that you can explore and click through as a bit of an interactive diagrammatic that you can do. Um, and there are other elements around, you know, finding your path. 
So there's a little questionnaire that um, asks you what you're good at, what you, how you respond in certain situations, almost like a psychometric test, but simpler version. Um, and then it gives you ideas around what opportunities may be available for you. So it's really, again, another engaging and interactive way of communicating with prospective employees. And then there's a kind of feel good, um, you know, I guess, um, almost mental health type area at the site, you know, that you can explore um, and just find out more about. So again, another, it's a good example of blend of good quality content and some interactive elements to address particular audience needs and their kind of priorities and their cycle of their careers. So I hope those, uh, those examples um, have been, been good for you. Um, I know there's been a few questions in the chat. Let me just um, see if I can um, address some of those. Um, there's a cracking question here on um, sustainability in ESG. Um, and entirely right that they're inextricably linked and interconnected. Um, what I would say is that um, the way we're looking at it is they're very different things, very different audiences. We actually ran a seminar on this about three or four weeks ago and amazingly got 400 people registered. So it shows what a hot topic it is. Um, but um, you know, clearly ESG needs to address predominantly, I guess, a, an investor lens for want of a better term around how sustainability environment, so from governance is being addressed by the organization. Um, so typically we would see that sit within the investor area. And, uh, you know, obviously sustainability is a longer or broader topic conversation around, you know, long-term sustainability of the business. So they do address slightly different things, but you're quite right. They are interconnected. So what we're seeing quite a lot of is, you know, the ESG area within the site contains a lot of the kind of reporting and uh, raters and rankers and you know, assessments and ESG overviews. And then spiders into other areas. It might be the governance areas of the site, or it might spider into sustainability, looking at some of the focus areas around that. And that's probably the most typical uh, arrangement that we're seeing. Um, I would say that probably in you know two to three years, it might be well and well end up being kind of the same area of the site. But I think we're not quite there yet, given the, the different nature of content. But that's certainly what we're seeing. So we do see it as different sections: one addressing slightly more the investor lens, and one slightly more on the sustainability lens. If you're interested in more information on that, let us know, and we can share uh, the presentation that we did for that event, which shows some examples as well. Um, and I think, um, you know, following question from that around, do we see blogs and news and insights and so on as engaging within the sites? Um, that probably depends a little bit on the topic. If it's pure kind of news items spun slightly as a blog, then no. But there are some areas of, you know, corporate sites that really do drive engagement. I mean, in Marsat has, for example, a huge area of insights and thought leadership um, that uh, underpin its entire offer that get great traction. And um, so it probably depends a little bit on the nature of the content and how differentiated it is um, and obviously how engaged your audience is. Um, but obviously it's a lot of effort, so you have to be sure that it is worth the investment to, to get the outcome. Um, good question around the animations and GIFs and how that impacts the carbon footprint of the site. Um, I mean, these days, perhaps less so than, than it otherwise would do, um, particularly with you know, techniques around CDNs and delivering content at local servers. So provided you have that set up, obviously the carbon footprint is reduced. Um, but um, you know, from what we see in the stats, it's not a huge amount of impact um, on delivering that carbon footprint. And clearly, you know, many organizations are now um, delivering carbon neutral websites. You know, either through offsetting or other, other means. So there are ways that that could be um, offset. I hope that answers that question. Um, and uh, yeah, mobile user experience. Um, yeah, absolutely a cracking question. Um, and uh, when you share the press, you can have a look at those sites on, on the um, mobile devices. Um, the ones I've shown today work well on mobile. So the ambience still work on uh, mobile. Um, and uh, obviously you can do specific coding that optimizes for mobile devices. And clearly that's important given Google ranks, has that as one of its ranking devices for search. Um, but you know, clearly at the time you're developing the design, you've got to think mobile as well as um, desktop. Um, stats wise overall on corporate sites, we still see about um, you know, over half, probably nearer two thirds of users of desktop because obviously the nature of the corporate audiences and so on. But you're absolutely right, it's got to work at least as well on mobile devices, it's got to be device neutral in effect. Um, so you know, hopefully that answers that question. So I'll just check whether there aren't uh, any other, other questions. Um, 
And yes, to the, to the to the question around sharing it, yes, we'll absolutely share the uh, presentation. Very happy to do that, and we'll do that afterwards. So I hope that's given a, a good canter through with some of the examples. Um, and as I say, we'll share the press so you can click through and explore the links uh, at your leisure. Um, but I think, uh, you know, in sum, what we would say is, you know, firstly, we've seen three things, for some mind, three things that we've seen of the trend of the last year, which is purpose-driven websites. So if you remember, we talked about the fact that it was very purpose or led. Purpose was driving the narrative across the different sections, whether that be the overall corporate narrative, whether it be the investor lens and the investment proposition, sustainability approach, and obviously is absolutely pivotal for prospective employees. Much more audience-centered, so curating content and meeting those individual audience needs, a more narrative approach to attract and engage audiences further. And of course, uh, a much more enriched experience, whether that be the use of um, just simple content loading techniques, and use of um, perhaps uh, interactive video elements, um, just you know, great ways to engage different users. Gamification, we've seen a couple of examples for. So I hope you found those three themes useful and some of the examples helpful for you in thinking about the evolution of your site. And finally, I guess what I'd say is, you know, if you'd like us to share with you how your website stacks up, um, there's a couple of options for you. You can either do a quick summary review, which will just share kind of a recap on what we assess. And the key trends, we can do an overview of how you perform and how you stack up versus the peer group and the overall FTSE 100 um, or SGX 30 if you're in Singapore. Um, and uh, we'll give you some ideas for you know, high level improvements or well, there's a kind of a full deeper dive option. Um, so if either of those is appealing to you, then obviously um, very happy to have the conversations, get in touch with us after the session. Um, but uh, if there are any other questions, I'll just look in the chat to see if there are any further. Um, Oh yeah, accessibility. Joe, thank you very much for that question. Um, yeah, cracking, cracking question. And you're entirely right. There's some animated GIFs um, do provide um, accessibility challenges. And I think that, um, you know, obviously the example, unfortunately I was showing you on the screen, obviously, you know, that just brings life an element on the page. So it won't necessarily be, um, you know, great accessibility wise. I think to answer your question around how important it is, um, I think there are very different views across the corporate real estate, for want of a better term. Um, some organizations um, really look to adhere to a high level of accessibility. You know, some of them are even requesting AAA. Now, clearly, you're absolutely right. If you go to AAA, then you cannot deliver a lot of the interactivity um, that you can otherwise do. Um, so there's a direct trade-off there. Um, I would say most corporate sites sit between A and AA. Um, and uh, try and deliver the best accessibility experience, either using uh, additional devices, read needs, making sure the annotation and notes and uh, controls and so on are in place across the site. Everything is tagged and so on. Um, but you're entirely right. It is, um, it is a trade-off between that high-level interactivity and the level of accessibility. Um, and I just think that's a judgment call based on uh, kind of audience profile and so on. Um, and very happy, Oscar, yes, to um, share the link um, to the recording and share the slide very much so. And if you'd like any follow-up sessions from Eddie on the call, then of course, do please let us know. We'd be very happy to do so. Um, if there are no questions, I would like to thank you, give you a few minutes back of your, your day. Um, and thanks so much for, for spending time with us today. Um, and I look forward very much to speaking with you all soon. Thanks very much.